Hello everyone, this is MMA Interesting Prospects Podcast. Today our guest is Aaron McKenzie, former LFA lightweight champion. Hello Aaron, how are you? Good sir, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. Uh, Aaron, we could start our conversation from the, the Ultimate Fighter, but I would love to, to start uh, to, to get back to LFA 128 in April 2022. Uh, if you can tell me what uh, did you think about this, uh, about that fight, and what di did you think that the, the win over Lucas Clay will guarantee you a shot in the UFC? Oh uh, yeah, no, I thought it was a great, uh, great fight, great opponent. Uh, he's one of the hardest guys to fight out there. Uh, and I was really excited that I did get to fight him, especially with him being uh, a grandson of Muhammad Ali. Uh, I thought that was awesome just to have that guy on my resume. Uh, and I thought I went over him was huge. You know, he was another one of the top prospects. I was fighting him for a potential shot in the future. Uh, and when I did get to the ultimate fighter, uh, call-ins when they asked us to come out and do medicals and stuff he was one of the guys that was there uh he was one of the guys that could have been on the show as well so uh, just knowing that i had that win over him that could have been what uh secured me that spot on the ultimate fighter so i thought it was a really good thing to have on my resume uh, and uh, after the the fight uh, uh on april did you think that maybe it will give you like the the guarantee shot in the UFC, or it is it always be like contender series spot or or the the ultimate fighter. Um, I I had hoped that it would guarantee me a shot just because of what uh, former LFA champions had gotten, uh, but with the UFC, you never really know what they're thinking. Uh, so there was a little bit of hope, but uh, honestly, there's never any real guarantee. It's just kind of how they feel at the time and what they want to do and. Uh, nobody ever knows that except for them, unfortunately. Yes, but uh, but of course I agree that LFA uh, LFA title always uh, may, maybe not always but very often mean the, the the fighter with the title is going to the UFC and I think that that the the fighters that you beat in LFA like also the the quality of them should guarantee you a spot like straight in the UFC. Yeah, absolutely. And that was why uh, I fought the guys that I did. Like, if you go through my record, there's no losers on it. Uh, there's only been tough fights. And I think that was part of why when I did get to the Ultimate Fighter and they had it set up the way that we did uh, against former veterans with a lot of fights in the UFC, why uh, I might have been one of the only ones who got to the decision. You know, uh, as far as my team, I was the only one that got to the decision. Uh, unfortunately, none of us were able to pull out the wins, but I definitely put on a great fight because I wasn't scared to go in there. I knew uh, because of who I had fought, the guys that could have also been in the show as well, uh, that that really gives me confidence knowing that I'm not going to be uh, in any position that I haven't been in the past already. So there's nothing out there really uh, that I'm worried about happening. Uh, and I think that that the level of the ultimate fighter of the fighters who were there, especially in the lightweight division, is like the the all of the fighters should be in the UFC because of their level, either the the veterans or or the prospects. I think that the this, this season was like if it happened like uh, one month later, it could be uh, other results than than the the final one. Yeah, absolutely. And I really, I agree as well that uh, the, especially in the lightweight division, pretty much every guy there could be in the UFC and have success. You know, uh, a lot of those guys had four, five, six, seven, eight UFC fights already uh, with close to 500 records or winning records. It's just guys that could have not even gotten cut before, you know, and so having that be your way in, it's, it's about as tough of a road in as you could possibly imagine. Um, and it's kind of like you said, we, more time on the show or more time training would have been great. I literally fought six days after we got in the house, you know, uh, so that makes it really tough when you do that and you're fighting in weird rules where it's only two rounds. So you don't get that third round to work when you could, I've, I've come behind and won in the third round a few times, you know, um, there's for me, a longer fight is a benefit. So two rounds, definitely it made it tough. 
and I understand the format that that there is uh, two rounds in in Ultimate Fighter be, because of the because of the how many fights that the fighters will have in, in like few weeks. But also I think that that the the fight like Astin Hubbard against you should be definitely a free rounder because we are not like that, the the fighters with I don't know uh, one and no record, but but you are. Uh, like the the top level guy, so it's like it's a little bit hard to see this kind of match in in a in a two rounder. Yep, I agree, one hundred percent. And if you can pick any lightweight from the from the uh, the the Ultimate Fighter to fight in the tournament, who do you like to to pick and face? Oh man, I, I want to fight Kurt. I'd love to fight Kurt, especially now that he's won. Uh, Kurt was always a guy that I had on my mind that would have been a great fight for me. Uh, and now with him winning the show, it'd be, an, it'd be something I'd love to go get back. You know, I'd love to have opportunity to fight him anytime. I'd love him to death. He's a great dude. Uh, but when it comes to it, I'd love to fight him. I think I match up really well with him. And were you a little bit surprised that, that uh, Kurt won the whole thing? I was. I was. I really thought Austin was going to win it. And I think he won the first round. I think he ended up just getting caught in round two and it kind of put him a little bit behind and then he was trying to catch back up and Kurt took advantage. It was awesome uh, submission for him. I think that overall his his story his story is quite cool because he had uh, two runs in the UFC. He didn't wa- he didn't want win any fight, but right now he he won a, he won a tournament uh, the the quarter final with the, with the submission, uh, and then then the the two two other wins. So I think that overall it's a very good cool score story for for a very good fighter as, as the the court. Yeah, absolutely. And if you go back and you see the guys he fought when he was in the UFC the first two times, they're not easy fights. It was a couple of guys who I think got into top 10, top 15. Uh, and it was just some very, very tough names. And a few, like one or two of them, he might have won. You know, he just almost won and then he got caught. So uh, he's definitely a great fighter. And I think he really deserved what he, uh, winning the show. I uh, did a great job coming from behind to beat Lee and then just. Uh, the fight he put on versus Jason was about as perfect as you could hope a fight would go. So uh, really happy for him, but I'd love to fight him. Uh, and actually, I was uh, quite excited uh, about your fight against uh, Austin because you both were uh, LFA champions. So we, it was like a little bit like the, the who is the final LFA, LFA champion. But but it, yeah. of course, sh- should be the, this first round. Yeah, I would, uh, if we could have got five rounds in that, I would have been happy. Yes, and 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 you actually showed that that you you are a very good fighter in the like five round distance in, in the, the fight against Lucas Clay. You won a, a fourth and a fifth round, so so it means that the cardio is no issue for you. Yes, sir. Uh, it's one of the things I like to pride myself on, and I actually made an Instagram post last week about how I don't get tired because I don't. I put in the work every single day uh, to know that in the fifth round I can keep going. So. Uh, that's something that I like to pride myself on is just going the final, uh, going to the final bell and never stopping. And how your your uh, training session uh, looked like uh, with, with Tim McGregor? Did uh, Connor train with you, or it's more the, the the John Cavano and and rest of the team? Yeah, so it was a little bit of both. Connor was with us a whole lot, um, and, but then when he wasn't there, his team was ready to take take part and they were ready to go after uh his coaches were awesome i really enjoyed having them around uh kavanaugh was great roddy was great uh, his boxing coach bill was good and i really loved his wrestling coach sergey sergey knows his stuff uh and just knowing that i had those high level guys around it was awesome you know you got a good chance to learn from people uh the training wasn't as hard as you know you would expect from back home something you're used to doing uh, but when you've got guys fighting every single week it's tough to go hard all the time so uh, they did the best they could, I think, with what they had. And if they had more time, I, I agree. I think they might have done a little bit better. So, And if the, the fight, uh, uh, Connor against Michael Chandler, will happen, who do you think will will, will win this? Man, I think it'll be a really tough fight, honestly. Um, just kind of depends on how they both fight. Uh, Connor's got a lot better grappling and defensive wrestling than people think he does. Uh, but Mike's an absolutely phenomenal athlete, you know. Uh, Great power from both guys, great timing. 
Um, just kind of depends on who lands the right one. Sometimes I think if you fought it 10 times, you know, five times, one guy might win five times. The other one might win. It'd be a really close fight. So it would be fun to watch. Uh, it should be interesting, but, but I think that it will end in the first or, or second round. That uh, both are the, the kind of fighters that it's hard to believe that it will be a 25-minute fight. They're definitely both sprinters, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, and uh, how the overall did your uh, journey with MMA start it? Um, so it kind of it was really kind of funny. I, I played sports my whole life. I played football in college and. Uh, when I got done doing that, I just I needed something to do. So I was playing all kinds of pickup sports, uh, pickup basketball, pickup volleyball, soccer, football, all this stuff. Uh, and one day I found out there was an MMA gym in town. We had just watched, um, I think it was Anderson Silva and Chael too. We just watched that. It was one of the first cards we've actually paid attention and watched. And uh, the next week I went down, or actually it was a few weeks later after I found out. But we just watched that and I went to the to the gym to check it out and They said, come back on Monday, and I went back on Monday and never stopped showing up. I had my first amateur fight three months later. I beat a dude in like a minute and a half with an armbar from the back. And uh, right now you are training in uh, with the Rafael Lov Lovato, right? Yeah, I train with Rafael Lovato for my jiu-jitsu grappling in my home base because it's, uh, it's close. And then I drive to Texas to do my striking with Stephen Wright uh, out of the war room in uh, Fort Worth. Uh, and do you do you have a, a sparring partner, training partners, the fighter, the, the young fighters that in a few years can be either uh, UFC fighters or, or bilateral fighters? Oh, absolutely. Um, so I got an 85er that I train with at home. His name's David Wright. He's going to be really good. He's got an unfortunate uh, start to his pro career. He came up against two really good dudes uh, and ended up getting caught and knocked out because big dudes, that, that happens, you know. Um, we're going to get him back in there and get him going again, and he's going to do great. Just wait until he gets there. And then and one of my other young guys down in Texas that I train with all the time, his name's Christian Gablinez. Uh, he's going to be awesome at 45 or 55. And then there's just there's a bunch of small guys down there uh, that are going to be really good. Romeo's going to be awesome, uh, a, a lot of those guys. So I'm really excited to see them grow in the next few years. Uh, and w when when I was watching your fights, you are like a, a very com complete fighter. You are a good striker. You are a good grappler. You have uh, like a very good uh, submission defense. And what's he, what is uh, right now your favorite part of the uh, of the training? Honestly, as uh, as, as much as people like to think of me as a grappler, I I, th I like to strike more. You know, I love striking. I like kicking people in the leg. I uh, like I uh, like uh, uh, just. Coming forward and going after people, elbows are always fun. Uh, but I, I really, like you said, I really feel like I'm a complete martial artist. But if I had to pick one that would probably be my favorite, I think it'd be striking. And also, I think that that like like seeing your record, it's like knockouts, submissions, and and you have a few decisions. So it, it means actually that you are a complete fighter because you can finish uh, he, your opponents anywhere. But you also can can fight in either 15 minute fights or to even 21 uh, 25 minute fights. So I think that it's like also also like good for you for your experience to ju just know, even if you know it before, you just have a proof of it that you can. Uh, fighting like uh, uh, full distance yes sir absolutely and that's one of the things that uh you know when you get a lot of these contender series prospects that come in uh and they've got all first round finishes it's got i got five knockouts in the first two minutes right and then you get them in there against somebody that can grind out a decision or somebody that's tough that can take those shots and then wear them out then sometimes they don't always do well right then you get that guy now all of a sudden he's five and one and you're always doing Uh, even a lot of my finishes are in the second round. So I, I had to go through some stuff to get to the finish. Uh, and then part of the reason that I haven't finished in uh, a couple of fights is just because my opponents have been high level. You know, it's a lot harder to finish when you start getting those higher level guys. Uh, and then unfortunately, you know, you get a lot tougher fight. Uh, so that's one thing that I agree. Like I, I'm tested everywhere. I can finish people standing up. I can finish people's submissions on the ground. Uh, and I'm comfortable wherever the fight goes. If somebody takes me down, I'm not, I'm not upset to be there. I can either work my way up, way back up, or I can get a submission from there. Uh, it just depends on how it goes. So uh, I am 100% comfortable wherever a fight is. And also, I think that the, 
this is important that you have a few good names on, sure. on your record, like Lucas Clay or uh, uh, Joe Gianetti, who you beat uh, yeah. for like uh, 15 minutes. So you uh, defended the, the submission attempt and then like dominated him. So I think that he 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 also is a very good fighter. So if you can beat him like that, it's like uh, you are a j j just better fighter, and your place should be in one of these these uh, top promotions. Absolutely, I agree. And Joe, Joe is a great fight. He's a tough fight. He was a fight I asked for uh, because he was one of the best guys that had been on the UFC uh, mats, on the cage. Uh, and he probably could have won that season. I mean, he lost a split decision to lose the show. Uh, so that means at least one judge thought he won. So he could have already been in the UFC and been there. But thankfully for me, he was outside the UFC and I was able to get that experience. Uh, and to, uh, what do you think should be next for you? Uh, uh, are you uh, close to to sign with either UFC or Bellator, or you are like in the in the like the 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 like w waiting for the opportunities? Yeah, so I'm still waiting for an opportunity. Um, pretty much, I think it's going to have to come short notice, just like it's been for a while. They they don't like to sign many guys outright for some reason. Um, but when it comes, if they want me to come on something short notice, I'll be there. You know, they can't. They signed up Lana Kiunas uh, two and a half, three weeks ago. My name was in for that as well. Uh, they picked Lana in because they wanted a guy who was pretty much strictly a striker uh, before anything else. And so that's where they went. You know, they picked up Landon. And uh, that's a guy that if you watch the show, he might have not been who you thought was going to get signed first, but I'm happy for him. He went out there and he put on a great fight and he did a really good job against the 10 fight UFC vet. So uh, I think it just goes to show that uh, the guys that we had on the show were, were all ready, you know? So hopefully I get that opportunity soon to go prove that I belong. So it's like in your words, there is a chance that, that we can see you even in this year, if the, the short notice fight will, will, will come. Absolutely. I'm, I'm fighting at least one more time this year. And if I get one soon, I'm going to try and fight again twice. Like I, I need, I've been stuck for the last six and a half, seven months where we couldn't fight. Uh, now I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm going on vacation next week. I mean, it's full go after that. And is there uh, any, any fighter in the UFC that you would like to, to face? Um, Kurt would be number one, I think, just because I want that shot. Uh, but then there's tons, you know, everybody wants to fight Patty Pemblet, but that's an easy call out. Everybody wants that because it's a uh, number one easy fight in the lightweight division. Uh, but there's tons of guys, you know, um, I'd love to fight some of those guys that have been around for a while, just the tough old veterans. Uh, but then I'd love to fight some of these guys that have been there for a little bit and maybe aren't, aren't moving forward too. But uh, I want the guys that nobody else wants to fight. If we're going to be honest, I want those fights because that's who I fought my whole career. They're the only guys who would say yes. Um, I want the, uh, who, who do we got? Like the Ishmagulovs, those guys. I, I want those guys because everybody's scared of them. You know, they don't want that fight and I want it. So uh, let me, let me have. Yes, you are right. No, nobody really wants the, the, this 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 fighters from 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 the Europe from this 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 region. That not not many fighters want to want to uh, fight them. Hundred percent. It's it's almost like if you've got somebody with an olive in their name, they everybody gets scared all of a sudden. But they they lace them up just like you do. They fight and train just like you do every single day. Uh, so I I, I want to give. People that I want to show people that uh, they're not unbeatable, like some people might think. I, I know that they're awesome fighters. I have nothing but the highest respect for them, but they can definitely be beat just like everybody. And I think that it will be it would be uh, cool. Let's say the the UFC 300 you against Jim Miller because Jim Miller uh, was in the UFC 100, 200, and he wants to be in the 300. And you maybe would not be an obvious choice, but I think that stylistically it would be it would be a very very good to see because he like uh, he likes to finish his fights, and you you also like to to finish your fights. Yeah, Jim Miller. I've, I've looked up to him for my entire career. Uh, and I, I would love to have an opportunity to fight him. I think a few times some people that I might have gotten to fight, like I, there was a chance for me to fight Eric Gonzalez for the LFA title. Uh, and like a week later, he got called up to fight Jim Miller and he got knocked out. Jim Jim's a tough dude and he's going to come in there to fight anybody. So I'd love a chance to fight Jim. He's awesome. Uh, and uh, 
who do you think was the toughest uh, opponent uh, in uh, your career? Um, so I think it's got to be either Chris Gonzalez or uh, Lucas Clay, you know, 100%. Chris, just because of the wrestling background he had, uh, wasn't my best night, unfortunately. I had a lot going on that fight, and COVID happened like a week later. I lost my grandma right before I went in there, and my coach ended up having to go to Europe, so he wasn't there for the fight. So I made a couple of strategic decisions that ended up costing me a split decision. Uh, but Chris was a great dude, great fighter. Uh, he ended up having to get his leg worked on later. He had surgery because I kicked his leg so many times. So that, you know, it makes you feel a little good that uh, you caused somebody to have to have surgery, but still lost the decision. But Chris was a great fighter. And then Lucas was awesome as well. Um, there was a few times I thought I'd won. You know, when I slammed him in the first round, I thought he was out. He didn't move for a second. And then he worked his way back in. He said, uh, he said, I had put him in positions where he had to decide if he wanted to keep going. And he did. So he learned a lot about himself that fight as well as I did. Uh, 25 minutes is a long time to fight anybody. And you learn a lot about yourself no matter what. And what do you think about state of, of lightweight division in the, in the UFC and the, the matchup uh, Islam against, against Charles Oliveira? Now, lightweight's best division, hands down. Like, there's no doubt about it. There's so many good guys, and everybody's well-rounded. You know, you've got uh, just about everybody's got the knockout power, uh, and everybody can wrestle. Everybody's got submissions. Um, so I think it's going to be, hopefully, it's a lot different fight than last time. Uh, Makachev caught him, and then once you catch somebody, a lot of things change, you know. Um, hopefully, Charles can uh, work through that and prove to people that maybe, you know, maybe, again, he's a lot better than people think he is. Like the way that he lost that first fight, I think got a lot of people to doubt him and doubt who he was as a fighter. Uh, but like I said, when you get hurt, you get hurt. You have a lot tougher time with everything. Everything slows down. Like we just saw this weekend where Izzy got rocked in the first round and he, he seemed to step behind for the entire rest of the 25 minutes. Right. So getting hurt like that makes a big difference. And that's one thing you got to watch out for. Uh, I think if uh, Charles changes his game plan a little bit, he can do a great job. He can win as well. Uh, it's another really good fight, and I'm excited to watch it. And uh, Charles won his last fight, so I think that also he, his mindset would be would be like much better because he knocked uh, out uh, the, the the fighter who was undefeated in three or four years. So I think that that it also yeah, will Benio, be really helpful. Great... Yep, and Benio was a really good win. I wish he would have got a title shot before he had to fight Charles, but I'm happy that he had a great run. Uh, that was a good win for Charles. Yes, I, I, I agree. I would love to, to see him uh, get the title shot. Maybe he will win two or three fight, fights and he still will get it. And uh, because uh, because we are a very experienced fighter, uh, if you uh, when you were a kid and... Uh, somebody who told you that that you are a MMA fighter a MMA fighter on the high level close to being signed in the uh, to the UFC would you believe uh, th this person man honestly probably not you know but back then fighting was so far from what i was thinking like at most i was getting in fights every once in a while just over stupid stuff you know me and the boys would get in an argument and all of a sudden we're fighting um i wasn't out bullying anybody i I got bullied a little bit, but everybody does, you know, it wasn't anything crazy. Uh, I grew up in a tough neighborhood, and, you know, and learned that you got to be tough. And I think that was something that I carried with me forever. So uh, that's part of how I've always been and part of how I've gone through my fight career. You know, um, I just know that uh, I've come too far to give up. And honestly, I was too far to give up in my first fight. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to do something with my whole heart. and I'm going to keep after it. But uh, I definitely don't know if I would have believed it back then. I think I wanted to be a football star and found out later on that that wasn't in the cards and this was. Uh, and if you can get uh, g give uh, young fighters uh, one advice, how to be MMA fighter or, or anything uh, like connected with the MMA, w what kind of advice would you would you give? The the best advice you can you can have for MMA is to just show up every single day, get better, never stop learning. Cause there's always something you can get better at. And even when you don't want to go, go. That's the best day sometimes. And it sucks. You know, there's tons of days where I haven't wanted to go in or I've been tired. My body's been beat down, 
uh, and I went and I had a great day and I learned a lot and I got better. Uh, and that's going to be the most important thing is to just keep showing up, just keep showing up, never stop. I think that it is a great advice, e e even uh, also for the fighting as well, but even in like overall life, just just go, go to work, e even if you don't feel like great, you have to show up and then like, like survive the, the hard days, because after the hard days, it will be great days. Absolutely. And how do you deal with the stress before your fights? Uh, so for me, I just remind myself that uh, I've already put in the work. Uh, I've done the right work. I've got the right team around me. Uh, and I can believe in what I've already done. So just knowing that I did the right things leading up to the fight, I know that the fight is going to go well. When loser draw, the people that are with me are going to be with me no matter what. And uh, I just got to go out there and do my very best. And I have no regrets at the end of the day. And after your fights, when you when you let let's say have to rest, you are you 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 can't train. What do you like to to do in in your free time? Uh, so on a day to day basis, I like to play Xbox. I like to play video games. Uh, my wife and I love to go to movies every week if we can. Uh, but as soon as the fight's over, I'm trying to go on vacation somewhere. Uh, usually, I use whatever fight purse I get to go on vacation. We love to go to Mexico, go to the beach. Uh, next week, we're going to. Universal and Disney. We're going to go do some Halloween Horror Night stuff. Uh, so just anything like that. I'm trying to go uh, and have fun. I love to go snowboarding in this in the in the winter time. Just stuff like that. And and it it is probably very good for your head because you can clear your mind and and have a like a few few weeks or, or days off. You you don't think about about your like normal life and MMA. Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, I have a last question. Uh, one last question: If you can uh, learn any skills uh, skill in the world, it can be anything. What you would would like to 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 learn? Uh, I'd like to learn some unstoppable takedown defense. If you could uh, stop any takedown, that's that's number one. I've been working on it for eleven years. So far, I can't stop them all. Yes, and and it it will it it would be very useful <laughs> in your fights. Makes fights a lot easier if you know you're not getting taken down. Uh, okay, Aaron. So uh, many thanks for for this conversation. I hope that we can see you in the UFC in 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 few weeks even, <laughs> and and maybe maybe the UFC 300 would be available for you. I hope so too, my man. Thank you so much.